Um, and then I will uh, step back from my role as MC and then uh, step into my role as the chair, as the, the president of the board of Oshawa and talk a little bit about the future of Oshawa and what's been going on and what's happening in a little bit more detail. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about is, uh, as Alicia said, Open Hardware Month. Open Hardware Month is something that we kicked off uh, a couple of years ago, and it's a real opportunity to take time in October to find local events in your local community. So obviously, we have the Open Hardware Summit every year that is usually <laughs> in one physical place, but we have community all over the world. And so Open Hardware Month has grown into this opportunity where people can raise their hands and say, I want to be the person who is organizing an open hardware event in my community. Uh, and so you put together the event, you tell us, uh, Oshawa helps aggregate all of them uh, and let people know. And so if you are in a community and you say, oh, I really want to do something for Open Hardware Month, you can look and see if someone's already doing it. And if so, you can reach out to them and coordinate with them. And if not, you can say, well, I'm gonna make this happen. And so I wanna make Open Hardware Month in my community. Um, these dots are just some of the events that we've had all over the world. The two reasons I'm mentioning this is first to get everyone thinking about um, the Open Hardware Month they experienced last October, but also to start thinking now about doing an Open Hardware Month event for your community this October. Um, we're absolutely going to be doing Open Hardware Month. We are very hopeful that they will all be local in-person events. And so start thinking now. Uh, go to ohm.oshawa.org to keep track of what's happening. You can also sign up for the Oshawa email list. You can follow us on Twitter, all the places to start thinking about Open Hardware Month because we think that this is going to be a great opportunity to do local events in your community. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, as Alicia mentioned, is the certification program. Uh, the certification program has been around for a couple of years, and people really seem to be uh, embracing it. As a reminder, the purpose of the certification program, which is a free program, is to be able to say that I am using hardware that complies with the community definition of open source hardware. So if you see this logo and someone says they're open source hardware, you know that their definition of open source hardware matches the community definition of open source hardware. If you want one of these logos, uh, it's very easy. You can go to certification.oshawa.org and fill out the application. And in a, in a couple of days, usually about two weeks, we can review those applications and get you not only the permission to use the logo, but your own unique identifier for the logo. And if you're curious what is going on with the certification list, uh, there's an entire list of all the certified open source hardware. You can sort it by country, by function, um, all of these things. So this is a great place to kind of jump into open source hardware if you're curious. Uh, there's also a bunch of information about hardware. Uh, it's about thinking about both um, how you document your hardware and how you license your hardware. So if you're trying to get a handle on what it means to be documenting your open source hardware and licensing your open source hardware, this exciting news about the, the new CERN open hardware license, we'll have to be updating things in the next couple of weeks. But the, the certification site is a great place to learn those best practices and to understand what's happening. Um, as I said, people have embraced the hardware, the, the certification, and it's been really exciting. I mean, this is a graph that we're very happy with. Um, there's over 400 pieces of registered open source hardware. Um, that's a graph, that's a line that we like to see and that we hope to keep uh, seeing going up. This is a slide from the 2010 summit, or sorry, the 2018 summit, that we were showing the growth, not only of the absolute number, but of the um, of the, of the number of countries. Because I think what's important is to remember that open source hardware is a global movement. And so as you see um, in 2017, there were 15 countries with certified open source hardware. In 2018, there were 27 countries with open source hardware. And now here we are in 2020, 
we have 36 countries with certified open source hardware. And so uh, this is fantastic. If you're in those countries that have been certified and you want to find out what people are doing, go to the certica certification site to find out. If you're in a country that hasn't certified anything, uh, you still have the opportunity to have the number one unique ID registration number for your country. So go to certification.ashwa.org, jump in and, uh, and be the first in your country. Now, we're really excited about the growth of the certification program, but we want to be able to really uh, kick it into higher gear. And so one of the things that, I, that we were announcing today at the summit is that we've just received a, a generous grant from the Sloan Foundation, and we are going to build out a read-write certification API. So what does this mean? Um, on the read side, it will make it much easier for people to, to download information about all the certified open source hardware, to um, do visualizations, to do analytics, uh, to present the information in a better way. I mean, we love the certification site and the certification directory. But if you can do uh, if you can do it better, if you can do it in a more interesting way for everyone or for just a specific community, we really invite you to do it. We want different ways to visualize what's happening with open source hardware. And we think the read part of the certification is going to be really useful for that. Uh, the write part of the API is also really important. Um, right now, you have to go to the certification site to fill in an application to, be cert to get certified hardware. Uh, that's fine. We think it's pretty straightforward and it's been working pretty well. But we would also love to integrate the certification process into the platforms that you are already using to host your documentation and to develop develop your hardware. And so um, we'd love to see the ability, if you've already uploaded everything to a platform, to have a button there that just says, certify my hardware without having to fill in the form again with the information on a different site. We're gonna be developing both of those things, the entire API, over the course of the next few months. If you are interested in either of those things, uh, please let us know at certification.ashwa.org. Reach out, let us know. We'd love to talk to you more about it. We'd love to get you involved, especially in the development process. So that's the first exciting announcement. Um, the second exciting announcement is a new program that we're really gonna be focusing on an outreach to the higher education community. And our goal for the first year is to get 12 campuses involved um, on across a, a couple of different, a different uh, groups, right? Professors, tech transfer offices, granting institutions, students. And the idea is to make it easier to connect with open source hardware when you are working in higher education. So what does this mean uh, specifically? Well, for researchers and professors, it means having information about how to think about and how to teach open source hardware. And also working with professors, especially, and, and researchers to make sure that um, their institutions recognize their contributions to open source hardware when evaluating them. Right now, if you're an engineering professor, uh, getting a patent is, is, is valued by your institution. Uh, we're working to make sure that contributions to open source hardware are just as valued. For tech transfer offices, obviously trying to build hardware and then openly license it is something that not all tech transfer offices are engaged with. And so this is something that we're gonna be working with tech transfer offices to make it easier for people within institutions to be able to fully license and fully open their hardware. Um, the third thing is granting organizations. Granting organizations want to do open, but we really wanna make it so it's possible for them to, to support open. And you know, many ways, uh, many granting organizations use a Creative Commons low license as the way to say, if you're doing research, if you're writing a report, it has to be open. And we know if you use a Creative Commons logo and license, it's open. Uh, we think similarly with granting organizations, if they're gonna require their, their grantees to make open hardware, um, an easy way to do that is to say, hey, if it's certified, it's open. So that's a requirement of what's going on. Uh, the last thing, Students, obviously, we want to engage students. We want to get you involved. We want to build hackathons. We want to support you. We want to feed you with pizza. Um, so these are all the pieces of this EDU program. If you are interested, and I hope you are, please reach out to info, info at oshawa.org so we can get you involved at the ground floor and really make sure that you are connected. 
the third thing that I want to announce is, as Alicia said, we are doing a new community survey. Uh, for those of you who remember in 2012 and 2013, we did these surveys. They were fantastic. They were really great at helping everyone understand the community, and understand what is going on. And so if you are watching this, I have two asks of you. Uh, the first ask is to fill out the survey. <laughs> The second ask is to spread the word about the survey, spread it to your community, spread it to your hacker spaces, spread it to everyone that you know who is engaged with open source hardware. It'll take less than 10 minutes to fill out the survey. We're gonna release all the, you know, we're gonna release all the conclusions so everyone can understand what's going on. And this is on this 10th anniversary, it's a really fantastic opportunity to help people, to help us and help the community understand um, where we are, who we are, how you came to open source hardware, why you are still here. Uh, the last thing, the last announcement is that we have, this is the first time in 10 years of open hardware summits that we can announce at the summit, the date and location for the next summit. So the next summit is April 9th, 2021 in New York City. Tickets are available now. Mark your calendars, make it happen. Um, and so the last thing I wanna do before I hand it over to our keynote, who's much more exciting than I am, um, is to thank you as a community. Um, this is true every year. I mean, the open source hardware community is fantastic and supportive and really, uh, really great at coming together. But this year in particular, obviously we've made a bunch of changes at the last minute uh, to make this, this a virtual event. And the support and the flexibility and the enthusiasm that all of you have brought to this process is just unbelievably heartening. And we just, we cannot thank you enough for doing it. So um, the things to remember are the read write API, get involved, the EDU program, get involved, the survey, get involved, take it, spread the word, and mark your calendars for the 2021 summit, which hopefully will be an in-person summit.